Real Hi-Fi Help. So um, I've listened to some really good amplifiers in my life and I've pretty much settled with what I need to get for myself. And I've of course got some things on my list that I wish that I could purchase. Perhaps I'll, I'll do that. Some of these things are on that list and um, I have basically listened to I would say almost anything uh, out there and uh, I would say that these things on this list this top 10 list is for me clearly the best so the best ever is the audio note Maisho Fono Silver Signature Tone Meister that's an integrated amplifier very powerful with a ridiculously good rear one of the best uh, rears ever for um, a gramophone player, uh, vinyl. Um, the sound is just so natural. The instruments have never been this good. And also the price, considering the price, uh, it is a very expensive amplifier, um, but it beats many amplifiers that cost two, three, four, five times more. And it even uh, I even prefer it compared to the uh, the Audio Note official best amplifier, integrated amplifier called the Audio Note Ongaku, which is like three times more expensive in price. But the thing is, is that it's so intimate and it's so tuned in and sound. It really hits you on an emotional level. And I have to say that there are a lot of good amplifiers out there that are, that are strong good control, a lot of interesting detail. But what I find with most of these amplifiers compared to the ones that I have on this list is that they just can't um, really express themselves. They, they, they can't tune into the different moods and the different intensities and the different tonalities, especially tonality. Um, a lot of the uh, amplifiers out there cannot at all get close to the uh, Audio Note uh, Maisho Tone Master. So, um, and it makes most tube amplifiers just sound dark and dead, even the most expensive ones. So I would say this is the best in the world ever amplifier ever. And the sound is just so exciting. So you're constantly just sitting at the edge of this, at your seat and just going, what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen? Just to give you a picture of it, and I believe that I heard from a lot of technicians that this is basically the shortest circuitry that you are going to get in a tube amplifier combined with the highest quality of parts. These are basically the parts that are here are basically almost what is humanly possible to to make <clears throat> up to the current date, 2020. We might be able in five, 10, 20 years to get something that's significantly better and it will most likely be audio note um, impressing us with that. But I would say in order to really get anything that's substantially better so you can really feel a difference, <clears throat> I would believe that you would have to be um, a millionaire and you would have to pay probably I'm guessing half a million to a million just for the parts to get some transformers that are better than these and uh, to get some resistors that are better than these and some capacitors that are better than these and being able to integrate it <clears throat> in a circuit that is even shorter than this just look how few parts there are in this design. This is ridiculous. I've never ever seen an amplifier with so few parts. I think there's fewer parts than 30 or 40 parts here. I haven't really counted them all, but I think a max. I think there's a maximum of, of 30 or 40 parts in, in this amplifier. And usually when you have an amplifier, even a tube amplifier, usually you would have at least a hundred or, or more parts in it, you know, and that makes such a huge difference, you know, it's, 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 it, it makes all the difference. 
and there's no in-between connections there's no bad cables there's there's no gold plugs or anything dampening the sound you know it's just maximum detail maximum detail and in such a natural way that i just haven't heard instruments like this before and and and, and such intimacy so um let me go back so second place we've got the autophono se silver signature that's actually the current uh amplifier that i have and um it's just incredibly um, daring uh, edgy 3d impressive um not a normal tube sound um crazy good for the money and that that was one of the reasons why i got it. it you just get so much value usually when i have to get this type of sound um you usually have to pay five to ten times more for, for this kind of sound if it if you at all can find it i haven't been able to find it it doesn't quite have the same um uh, solid sound it isn't as powerful it isn't quite as uh, intimate um i would also say that the ongaku on the third place has a lot of qualities that my auto uh, doesn't have but what i really like about it is that it's very um, raw and in your face in a very developed uh, high level even though it's a tiny bit analytical it's also very warm but in a, in a very on a very 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 high level that you almost don't ever get with tubes. So this this is almost the, the, this is a weird amplifier. It almost as if it doesn't really belong in in the uh, audio note hierarchy. I, I don't really get it price wise. Um, I haven't really investigated the price. Uh, I'm not really interested in that. Y you guys can find out if you if you want to. But. Um, yeah, th there are some qualities of, of the Ongaku that I wish I had in my Silver Signature. Uh, but price-wise, nah, I, I really feel that this is a lot better amplifier. Of course, I would like a, a stronger, more solid, uh, masculine sound that is a tiny bit more uh, uh, evolved. Of course I would. Uh, also, the Japanese version is also clearly better than, than mine. But somehow it's just i don't know somehow it's just a tiny bit more exciting this one even though it's it's a bit more thin raw in your face and maybe a bit analytical uh those are my impressions so um let's let me jump off to 2.5 that's negra vpa with negra plp preamp and it was, it's an old uh, it's an old design released around 2009 me guessing so incredibly spacious three-dimensional cool just crazy uh, micro detail um it's just that space in in in, 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 the, in the sound stage that that just is so impressive um some critics would probably say that is a bit analytical um but it gets a lot better when, when you change the standard tubes with some really good ones that's actually one of the first um really good amplifiers that that i've heard i would really recommend listening to this this is an absolute classic and of course there's the new negra sound um a different more natural and, and, and round na uh, negra sound in some ways better i i prefer the old one I, i'm not really sure why they're both really good in their own way maybe it's because i haven't just found the, the the perfect combination of equipment but they're both really good in their own way and then there's the negra 300 and b uh, amplifier just that negra sound again just a bit more uh, natural because it's a tube uh, amplifier so uh, just just amazing and and, and negra classic that's transistor just so you guys know so the, the this could be because i like tube sound more than transistor it could be that's why i don't know but try and listen to this with this verity sarastro 2 speaker also amazing combination now something for some something really incredible uh, incredibly freaky 
um, top spectral mono blocks and preamplifier. This sound is just so different in, uh, I don't really know exactly how to describe it. So I wrote some things down here, very clear and layered with ultra precision, almost more than ne Negra. And the 3D and detail is really vulgar in, in, a, in a dry way, but it's, it's almost disgustingly good, especially with uh, Martin design speakers or similar uh, Akuton uh, ceramic drive units from a, another speaker uh, manufacturer. A sound you just can't get out of your head, especially with the top MIT or spectral cables, which is apparently is designed specifically for and I don't, I'm not really so crazy about those cables, but they do on this system sound ridiculously good, especially the separation and the micro detail. And again, the, the whole three dimension and layering and space, it's just crazy. Um, so it can sound a bit grayish and boring when you have it together with the usual combination that you see it shows with an audio speakers, MIT, or spectral cables so you can actually use other cables even though this they say that you're not allowed to do that I've, I've heard that for some people but you guys have to have to find out for yourself that is the thing that i'm saving up for i'm i'm someday i'm going to own this this is just crazy i'd also like to go back to the the old negra vpa to, just just to have it because nowadays it's it's actually pretty pretty cheap uh, compared to the old price and um, this is just amazing uh, Bob Carver 180 monoblocks I'm usually not a Bob Carver fan but these are very cheap compared to what you're getting these are probably one of the most versatile monoblocks I have ever heard in my life you can basically take these monoblocks and get some really really good sound on almost any speaker they're just so good at adapting to that particular speaker that you're using. So you can go from like, I don't know, <coughs> sorry, from around 80 dB to maybe 100 uh, dB um, speaker. It's just crazy. You, you all, there's no, almost no monoblocks on the market that can, that can serve such a wide range of speakers. Crazy. And uh, that's why I had to have it on this list. It's also... It's fantastic. It's a fantastically evolved sound. It's not a Macintosh or an ear sound or something like that. It has its own sound. It's very difficult to describe, but I would say American and versatile, and it's just gorgeous speaker, uh, not speaker, <laughs> um, monoblocks. So if you ever see that, get a hold of that. That's basically one of the hidden gems hidden on the hi-fi market. So as the last one, I've got the AudioNote M3 Phono Signature Pre-Amplifier. So this is basically the best pre-amplifier in the world for the price. And it will probably beat anything else that isn't AudioNote. Um, this just, it's just so natural. That, that's just the thing. There are many really really bad preamplifiers in this world you almost can't find a really good preamplifier that can figure out how to integrate and fully balance the sound and get really close and intimate into the different feelings uh different tonality just really get close to it most preamplifiers have this problem that they give you power, they give you control, they give you the dimension, they give you the 3D, the separation and everything, especially when you're paying more and more. But it never really gets the ability to fully, really uh, get close to the to the music. It almost has a, a sort of a, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't say a narcissistic personality, but it has this like fake way of looking at stuff and not really connecting. So um, that's why I think this is basically the best preamplifier ever. So if you have some some pretty decent transistor equipment, try and use this together with that. It's so good. And especially if you change the standard tubes to something pretty decent. 
it will basically beat any preamplifier. And of course, like I've, I've written here, of course you can get something that's a lot better from, from audio note, but it's gonna cost you. And um, so basically this together with the Bob Carver 180 that I covered in the, in the step nine, you're basically getting a really good properly set up hi-fi system at, at a hi-fi show for, I don't know, uh, for, I'm just, I'm just throwing a number out here. I'm, I'm guessing around $10,000 uh, used. That, that's my guess. You guys can look it up. But this is a fantastic uh, combo. Like I said, it beats everything that's transistor equipment and everything that's tube that isn't audio note. And of course, when you get audio note M9 and M10, of course, it's going to get three, four, five times better, of course. But it's also that those kind of preamplifiers cost as much as a house and it's just unattainable. Um, so I recommend only using audio note equipment with a 94 to 105 dB speaker. And many 90 to 95 dB speakers are still not good enough for the audio note sound. Audio note make a very honest and real sound that is unfiltered. Okay, so, so that's one of the reasons why it's very, very difficult to take a good piece of audio note equipment and use it, even if you have a pretty good speaker. So whatever you do, use audio note cables, audio note um, uh, speaker, audio note amplifiers together. You might not even have to have an audio note source. I think I think you can get away with that. But also, if you can get an audio note source like a CD player or a DAC, do that. They've created a certain sound which is not very compatible with a lot of other brands in the world simply because they have lifted themselves up to a standard that is so high and commun communicates on such a different language that you have to be pretty lucky combining it with other pieces of equipment. So I'm, I'm saying that because I've, I've been to so many friends who have bought some audio note equipment, uh, listened to it in the store or heard it at a friend's place, and they've only managed to squeeze like a third out of that uh, equipment because they're sticking with a stupid speaker that they got for half price and it doesn't matter if you have a half a million uh, dollar speaker most of them won't work properly with audio note gear I mean getting a, a ten thousand uh, dollar audio note speaker sometimes sound a lot better than a half a million uh, dollar speaker just because it, it, it's audio note and it speaks with the audio note equipment on a certain wavelength or whatever you call it so just letting you guys know this, I struggled for many, many years having a high quality speaker, changing between other high quality speakers. And in the end, I had to throw the, the towel in, in the ring saying, I actually have to go for a cheaper speaker so it sounds 10 times better. It just didn't make sense to me, but I did that. And in the end, everything was just completely tuned in and you're fully engrossed with this huge real audio note sound. So I also want to say that Nagra and Spectral equipment especially designed for top speaker brands like Verity, Martin Design, Karma Speakers, Peak Consult, Wilson Audio, Rockport, and there are almost no other speakers that, that are good enough. So it's just, just to give you guys a head up, these are some of the best speakers fitted for those two brands, just so you guys know.